So hi, uh, my name is Alexi Morvan, and I'm going to talk about a work that we did here at Google Quantum AI about the formation of robust bound state of interacting photon. So here we are interested in about quantum simulation on our com quantum computer device. And like one of the easiest problem you can tackle is the so-called 1D free fermion problem, where we try to simulate 1D free fermion on a chain. So this is a problem that we have already tackled uh, at Google, and, and here is two of the most uh, recent example. And today I'm going to talk about something very similar to the second example, where, um, where we have um, simulate free fermion on a, on a 1D ring without interaction. Um, so the next natural step for this tip for this type of quantum simulation is to try to go to interacting system, meaning that no uh, excitation, when they get close to each other, they try to uh, accumulate a phase or interact with each other and don't pass through each other. So let me make a distinction between two types of interacting system. You have the uh, interacting systems that are called integrable and the interacting systems that are non-integrable. The difference is that for some of the integrable model, we know uh, the analytical solution uh, so we are able to use this system, which are complex uh, because of interaction, but we still know very precisely what um, the result should look like. So this model forms a very nice uh, benchmark for our quantum uh, processor. But then um, you want to uh, move toward breaking this integrability because this allows you to go into a region where analytical tools are uh, less useful, and you don't know as much what will happen. And so this work is trying to work in this region between uh, integrable system and try to break this integrability to go beyond what is possible with analytical tool. And the question that we try to ask is, can we do simulation of correlated system in a meaningful way on our uh, quantum processor? And this is related to a recent manuscript that is on the archive on the formation of bound state of interacting photon. So to realize interacting uh, system on our uh, device, we are using the FSIM gate. The FSIM unitary is given here, and, and this is a very nice gate for quantum simulation because it has two components. The first component is the kinetic of open term in green that correspond to uh, having your excitation move uh, on your um, chain. The second term is interaction, uh, which correspond to here to a phase accumulated when two excitation come close together. Um, thanks to a lot of work here, uh, we have been able to get um, this gate uh, to a very good fidelity uh, for a lot of different angles. Um, so, to give an example, no, this uh, gate is actually better than uh, if we were to use a decomposition with CZ gate. So, using this tool, what, what do you want to do? So, so what we would like to do is uh, the XXC model, which is a canonical example of interacting system on 1D. And here I'm giving the Hamiltonian. So as I said, this Hamiltonian has two types of term. You have the first term in green, which corresponds to uh, hoping or kinetic energy, and the second term, which corresponds to interaction. This is a very well-known model, and actually, like long, um, al almost uh, 100 years ago, it was shown that uh, this model was integrable, and we know an analytical solution for um, this system. Even more, this model has what's called bound state, meaning that um, there is formation of composite um, excitation that behave as a single uh, particle. And this was observed like 10 years ago in cold atom. So in our quantum processor, um, simulating directly Hamiltonian dynamics is, is rather challenging. But what we can do very nicely is uh, Floquet dynamics or just applying periodically a circuit. And, and this is typically what I'm showing uh, down below with a circuit. Uh, we can prepare a state, let it evolve through a periodic unitary evolution, and, gen and then do a measurement at the end. So those models are different from Hamiltonian model uh, because uh, are different from Hamiltonian model. And it's uh, until very recently, it was like not so much was known about them. And it was just shown like um, a few years ago that the Floquet axis Z model is also integrable. And it was shown like last year that um, by Igor, a liner from our group, that there, um, 
So Igor derived an uh, analytical solution to this model. So this makes this model a very good um, um, a very good model to explore uh, this physics and to benchmark our quantum processor. And I should also add that uh, bound state is some features that are really easy to observe because you just need to see that excitation. If you put, uh, if you prepare a bound state, the, the system, like the bound states, stay uh, through the evolution. So uh, just to give you an idea, an intuition why bound state exists in this model, um, so, if you have no interaction, what happens is that excitation can go through each other without interacting, and this is the left uh, case. But now, when you have interaction, um, when excitation are close together, they will accumulate a phase. And now, if you look at uh, here a path to separate uh, two parts of a bound state, you will see that, that there will be um, a destructive a construction of destructive interference by summing over all the paths um, due to this accumulation of phase. Okay, so so now the for the rest of this talk, um, I will show experimental data, and I hope you that I will convince you that first we have been able to observe those bound states in our system, then that we have been able to uh, do the spectroscopy of those bound states and measure uh, their energy momentum relationship. So, uh, and finally, uh, we will try to go beyond integrability and try to break integrability and see what happens. And usually this means breaking the bound state. Okay, so first, how do we see that we have bound state? The experiment that we do here is that we prepare uh, a state, and usually we will prepare qubits uh, adjacent to each other. This is uh, uh, almost like a bound state, and we let it evolve through our unitary evolution, periodic unitary evolution, and at the end we will measure in the z basis. A single particle will behave like we'll just uh, move along uh, our chain and um, and will create a, a pattern. So uh, here, this is uh, the evolution of a single excitation through this evolution. So what happened is that the single excitation, you, you see like move uh, along the ring and you see that um, there is like a cone, which is um, just the cone of the uh, uh, single excitation moving along this chain. And so this is single excitation. So no, uh, no, we want to move toward like a uh, bound state. So what we do to have a bound state is that we prepare two adjacent sites into the one state and we let it evolve. So this is what we have done and this is what you see here. So here what you see is, is there is two cones. So there is a first cone, which is very similar to the one of the single excitation case. And this is actually because we are not exactly preparing the bound state. But then you are seeing a second cone, which is much, uh, which go much slower. And actually, uh, I can tell you that this is the cone of excitation staying together, meaning that when we measure in Z, we see two excitation close um, to each other uh, in the same way that when we have prepared the state. And so we have done this for several number of adjacent excitation up to five uh, photons close to each other. And each time we see that um, when we prepare uh, uh, five adjacent seats, for instance, it will stay five adjacent seats through the evolution. To further, so, so we are showing that the photon remain adjacent over long circuit depths, meaning that uh, we, we kind of observe bound state. So to convince you even more, uh, what we have been looking is at the center of mass of our photon bound state, meaning that now we are just reporting the middle of uh, the bound state that we are seeing. And now we can see that there is an interference pattern that appear uh, that is really reminiscent of the single interference pattern of the single excitation. And, and this shows that the bound state of two photon, three photon, etc., behave exactly like a single composite particle. And on this data, actually, what you can measure is you can measure the group velocity by looking at this initial cone. And um, we have been reporting it as a function of the uh, bound state size. And this we can compare to analytical results. And we find a very good agreement, meaning that we are seeing what we would have expected. To go a bit more um, beyond that, what we can do is we can measure the band structure. So to do this, we need to measure um, correlation. So how do we do that? So now we are going to change the uh, initial state preparation. So now instead of preparation, preparing only the bound state, we are going to prepare it a superposition of the uh, of zero everywhere and bound states plus so, some some term. 
And then, now we, we let this uh, superposition to uh, evolve through the uh, periodic circuit. What happened is that the, the zero state will not evolve through this uh, unitary evolution. It will not acquire any phase, but the bound state will. And then at the end, we do a measurement, which is given here for the two photon case that allow us to retract, uh, retrieve the phase accumulated by the bound state with respect to the re zero state. And this will allow us to do the spectroscopy. So this is what we see in real space and real time. And here you can see, so this is for the two photon case, and you can see that we find back the cone of the two photon bound state. But now if we do the two, uh, two D Fourier transform on this data, meaning that we transform space into momentum and time into energy, we find this type of plot, which reveal exactly the band structure of the bound state, of the two photon bound state. And this is already quite remarkable that we are able to see uh, the energy momentum relationship of uh, this composite particle directly. Of course, we have been able to do this for uh, the different size of bound states that we have already observed. And because this model uh, has a known analytical solution, we have been able to compare the analytical solution to our data. That you, so the analytical solution here is in dashed line, and you can see that we have a very good agreement, meaning that we understand very well uh, uh, the bound structure of the state, and we are really measuring what we were expecting. So, so we can push this even further now, is that uh, now that we have uh, a way to measure the band structure, we can try to uh, add magnetic uh, flux. So magnetic flux in this type of system amount to add a complex hopping term between sites uh, depicted here. And this we can do actually very easily by adding single qubit rotation before and after the FSIM uh, gates. And, and this amounts to having an FSIM gate that look like this. So when we do this and we vary uh, the flux threaded through the, um, the ring from zero to one, uh, we see that the band structure shifts uh, in the Brillouin zone. And so here you see that the band structure uh, is shifting by a full Brillouin zone as we uh, uh, sweep the flux from zero to half. And what this means is that the charge of this bound state is two, uh, which is expected because it's the number of photons inside this bound state. So uh, we have been able to measure um, the charge of all the bound states that we have previously seen. And we see that the, si like the, the charge of each bound state is, uh, very, like, is very close to the one that we expect, which is the number of, of photons inside our bound state. So again, this is a, a prediction uh, by, made by the analytical results that we can confirm here. OK, so, so far, we have been looking at a 1D integra integrable system and we have shown that we are very close to what we were expecting. And so this, this is a very good benchmark for our quantum processor. But now we want to push our system a bit further and try to enter the regime of, uh, that is be a regime that is harder to, to, to access with analytical tool, and that will be in future hard to access for classical computing. So we want to break integrability. So why this is interesting? This is interesting in this system because if I look at the band structure of the three, bot three photon bound state, right? This live on top of a continuum of single, uh, single excitation, meaning that for the same uh, energy momentum point, I can find both a three photon, three photon bound state or three independent photon on my on my ring. Um, and usually, bound states are usually protected by integrability or some type of symmetry. So when you break it, you are expecting to induce a decay from the bound state into this continuum. And this, you can put some, some rule behind it with the Fermi golden rule, which will be proportional to the density of states uh, uh, on the bound structure of the uh, three photon inside state. So the message here is that we expect bound, like naively, we expect bound state to be very fragile and very dependent on this integrability. And as soon as we will break it, we will, choose a, will break the bound state. But there will be information on all those bound, bound state break. So to break integrability, what we did is that we uh, increase the Hilbert size by adding a site every other site. And we had an extra layer of FSIM gate here in red, where we can vary the swap angle between the main chain and the extra site. So this allows us to continuously 
increase, uh, to continuously break integrability in our system and see all the bounds that are going to disappear. So this is what we do. And here I'm plotting two limits. The limit where um, the swap angle on the extra site is zero. So we are still in the integrable limit. And we see a slow decay of the survival probability of bound state, meaning that the bound state kind of survived. And here there are, the decay is, is fully due to uh, dephasing in our system. But now if I put a very strong uh, integrability breaking, meaning that I have a swap with the extra site of pi over two, almost uh, a full swap, I will. I see that the, the bound state decay very quickly, and I, I have almost zero bound state after just a, a few cycles. So these are the two limiting cases. But now what's interesting is that when I put a perturbation that is not small, but of the order of magnitude of uh, the swap on the main chain, I see that I have a curve that is very similar to the case uh, uh, of the integrable model. And, and what this means is that even though I, I am in the, at a point where uh, integrability is broken, I still have bound state that seems to survive. Um, so we have confirmed this by, sweep, by sweeping the uh, swap angle on the extra site. And indeed, we see that um, the bound state survived for a very long time. Uh, so not for a very long time, but they survive um, for a very large angle uh, on this uh, extra site, meaning that they survive for very large uh, uh, integrability breaking term, which is rather uh, uh, strange and unexpected. Uh, so we, we have confirmed this with spectroscopy. So here you see that uh, for theta prime equal pi divided by six, so same swap angle on the extra site and on the main chain, we still have a peak in the spectroscopy for the three photon bound state. And uh, we, we have looked at the size of this part, like the, all this peak disappear as uh, we increase uh, um, as we increase the strength of the integrability breaking term, and and we see indeed that at the beginning uh, um, for small perturbation, this um, like the, the the width of the peak is not very sensible to to this term, and actually it survive for a, a quite large angle pi over six. So. Uh, so far, we don't have an acceptable explanation yet for this phenomenon. Maybe there is some pretermalization going on. We are not sure, uh, but this goes against what we were expecting. Um, we have ID, uh, uh, but, but for now, this uh, is still open. So in conclusion, I hope that I've convinced you that uh, we have observed bond states. We have been able to characterize them and, and by through this characterization, we have been able to benchmark our quantum processor for quantum simulation. And finally, we have been able to get slightly beyond integrability and, and try, we have observed like, um, we have observed a robustness of uh, those photon bound states that was unexpected. So now there is, of course, an open question is why are those bound states robust here? And the next question is, can we construct a, a beyond classical experiment by, based on this? So. With this, uh, I would like to thank you for the atten your attention. Uh, the manuscript is on the archive, and I would like to thank the, the full Google team for, uh, for this project. Uh, and, and more spe specifically, I would like to thank my close collaborator here. Um, and that's it.